Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306, and you might be wondering why you're staring at a blank table. Well, I bought this, uh, it's a 7th gen iPod Classic, this is a 120 gig model, and I bought it, none of the buttons work apparently, the hold switch works, detects that, it boots up, it restored just fine in iTunes, but none of the buttons work, and the scroll wheel doesn't work either. Now, there are plenty of tutorials on how to open these guys up, these are notoriously difficult to open. And if you want to know that, then I would suggest finding another video. There are plenty out there. I just spent like the good part of 40 minutes uh, getting the case open and getting to this point where I can actually start testing things. The board looks fine. There's There might have been a little bit of, I don't know, corrosion or dust. I wiped it off and it doesn't seem to have left a trace. So I think that's fine. But like I said, none of the buttons do anything. It, ironically enough, interesting, just woke up. It's... Almost like the wheel maybe partially works, but also doesn't. So I'm clicking, and it's not doing anything. Up. Oh. Ah, there's an intermittent connection, I bet you. wonder if I press. Let's see. Yeah. There's an intermittent connection on this. By the way, if you don't know, the 7th gen and the 6th gen, are all the parts are pretty much cross-compatible. And so I pulled this old 6th um, gen click wheel, and I stuck it in here, and it worked straight away. So I knew that something is up with this. I'm thinking maybe there's a loose connection, because I can kind of... And what's weird is, so you would figure that the click buttons would still work, because those are actually on the PCB below it. But apparently having a busted click wheel also means that it won't respond to any of the uh, click presses. But yeah, I'm going to play around with this. But clearly it's some kind of intermittent connection. Uh, maybe on the ribbon is damaged or something like that. So give me one second. Okay, so I brought out the microscope. And we're going to take a look at the ribbon Get this nice and focused. There we go. You can see what the problem is right away. The last two traces, there's that is actually broken. And the reason why it worked when I pressed the board together and flexed the ribbon slightly was because it was retouching those metal pieces. So there's a hairline crack across the last two pads. Now it would be easy enough to solder, put a little tiny blob of solder, very thin, on this last pad because it's quite large and it's right near the end. Uh, but resoldering this small one would be a little more difficult. Definitely doable, but I have to ask myself the question. So this is how it's supposed to look. This is my working one. You can see this one's perfectly fine. And so I have to ask myself the question, is it really worth the time doing that or just swap you know, this working uh, ribbon? Now, the only contention I have about that is this white plastic doesn't match the aesthetic of the rest of the iPod. So what I'm probably going to do is uh, remove this ribbon flex and swap it just for the black plastic. So I'm just going to heat it up with some hot air to get the adhesive gummy so I can peel it off very carefully so I don't rip anything. And uh, just swap out just the outer portion here. Okay, so here's how the uh, touch wheel is assembled. There's basically little dimples where it presses the tack buttons underneath, so you have to line that centered. Getting this off wasn't that hard. I just used a little hot air to soften the adhesive. Yeah, you want to get it lined up and then just press down. And I left the adhesive on the flex so that I can just stick it right back down. Now... There's this little piece here, and the job of this piece is to kind of, I, I think this is like some kind of painted um, steel or something. It's slightly flexible, but uh, this will hold the wheel aligned properly. So you want to get it aligned symmetrically so that the buttons can be pressed through these slots. And then these tabs have to protrude in each of the corners, and that prevents the wheel from rotating left and right. And it just holds everything kind of aligned properly. And you want to get it as centered as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect technically, but, you know, just try to do your best. And that should be all together now. So this is the good ribbon. 
And so let's uh, reassemble and test. Okay, so we were mostly back together. I haven't snapped it shut, <laughs> just in case if it didn't work. But yeah, let's um, fire it up. So far, it responded to the button press, so that's already an improvement. Let's see if the scroll wheel works. Might take a little while to boot. And there we are. So, scroll wheel's working. I don't have any music on here just yet, but I can hear it clicking when I actually click the buttons. And if I press and hold, it will shut off. So yeah, that about wraps it up. All that's left is just to carefully snap this shut. There we are, and we are pretty much as good as new. So yeah, uh, this guy, um, I've been noticing a trend. iPod, uh, like the later gen iPods, this, the 6th and the 7th gen, prices have been increasing pretty steadily. And they've been discontinued for quite a while. And about, yeah, this is a 120 gig model. There we go. And the battery is a little bit not doing so great uh, just because I'm guessing this sat on a shelf for quite a while uh, because of its non-working condition. So if your iPod refuses to respond to any of the button presses and the hold switch you know is off, then it's almost definitely going to be the click wheel. And what I'm probably going to do is I'm not going to throw this out. Uh, this still mostly worked and I showed that it worked when I pressed on the ribbon. So I'm going to actually get underneath the microscope and this will be its own video and I'm going to try to solder those two wires back on and I have you know a couple other test iPods I can use um, this is a motherboard I think with a, a hard drive connector problem there's like some damaged pins or something and some corrosion but it will boot to um, to the diagnostic menu to allow me to test the click wheel so I think we're going to do that in another video where I try my hand at micro soldering <laughs> And that's not going to be fun, but I think it has to be done. Anyway, yeah, hopefully this helped you guys. If you have an iPod that the, the click wheel no longer works, but it otherwise fully boots and it connects to the computer and it does everything else, then it's got to be the click wheel. You can buy replacement ones. I think they're about, last I checked, they were about like five, six bucks. Uh, that might have increased. It might be like 10 now. I have no idea. I haven't checked. I just used what I had on hand, a spare white click wheel. Uh, and I just swapped out the plastics, pretty much. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.